in my earlier video i had discussed about diagonalization of a matrix today's goal of this lecture i will discuss this topic also elaborately because diagonalization of a matrix are very important for any competitive exam at first just recall in my earlier video i had seen a square matrix a is said to be diagonalizable if there exists an invertible matrix p such that p inverse ap is diagonal matrix that means a is similar to a diagonal matrix and that imply we all of us know p inverse ap is diagonal matrix means p inverse ap equal to d and the general definition is consider a which belongs to c n cross n is diagonalizable if it is similar to diagonal matrix okay t, one linear operator t will be diagonalizable when consider a linear operator t from rn to rn with condition t of x equal to x because we all of us know every linear transformation represent a matrix then if a equal to p d p inverse that means if p a p inverse equal to diagonal matrix d then we can tell a is diagonal as well and the column of this p from a basis b in which the linear transformation t with respect to this basis will be the diagonal matrix then we can tell this linear transformation b diagonalizable okay oh well for example consider the vector space equal to r2 and field equal to r consider a linear transformation t from r2 to r2 such that t of x comma y equal to x comma 0 obviously this is the this linear transformation is projection operator now i will see is this linear operator be diagonalizable for this consider choose a basis now my question what type of basis i will see because the definition is a is diagonalizable if the linear transformation which represent a matrix will be similar to a diagonal matrix basis actually the eigen vector of this linear transformation since this linear transformation will represent a projection matrix so obviously if you check the eigen value would be 1 0 since 1 and 0 be the eigen value so eigen vector it is 1 0 and 0 1 and notice since 1 0 and 0 1 be the eigen vector then t of 1 comma 0 equal to 1 0 and t of 0 comma 1 would be 0 0 and we can write 1 0 as 1 times 1 0 plus 0 times 0 1 and also 0 0 we can write as 0 times 1 0 plus 0 times 0 1 that means this is equal to from this expression we can write this is equal to column is 1 0 and other 0 0 okay therefore this is the matrix representation of this linear transformation mm. and since this matrix is similar to diagonal matrix so we can tell this operator b diagonalize diagonalizable operator are you getting oh well and the condition to find one linear transformation be diagonalizable or not condition one 
if the eigen value are all distinct then we can tell the matrix a is diagonalizable or condition 2 if a has not all distinct eigen value that means if a has same eigen value but if the geometric multiplicity of eigen value is equal to algebraic multiplicity of eigen value then also we can tell the matrix is diagonalizable and we all of us know the geometric multiplicity means dimension of number of eigen vectors that means dimension of eigen space is called as geometric multiplicity of eigen value now i will see one interesting example at first i will see some example then i will discuss new type of idea about diagonalizable similarly one matrix a equal to whose diagonal entries is 0 and other entries minus 1 1 then characteristic polynomial would be lambda square plus 1 equal to 0 and from this characteristic equation we can tell this equation has no real root that means obviously from this equation we can tell this equation has no real eigen values and since the equation has no real eigen values then we can tell the matrix a is not diagonalizable over r since the root r not belongs to real number but obviously we can tell a is diagonalizable over the field complex number and this type of example are very important for any competitive exam notice here the matrix b belongs to r but matrix is not diagonalizable over the real number it is diagonalizable over complex number now i will say the da diagonalization of symmetric matrix in symmetric matrix all root of characteristic equation of a symmetric matrix are always real and a symmetric matrix when it has distinct eigen value then always a symmetric matrix will be diagonalizable okay this is the diagonalization of symmetric matrix now i will see three equivalent condition if a is n cross n matrix then following three condition are always equivalent condition 1 a is orthogonally diagonalizable and or orthogonally diagonalizable always imply a has orthonormal set of n vectors and condition 3 always a is symmetric one always imply two because given that a is orthogonally diagonalizable that means by definition p inverse equal to p transpose that means d equal to p transpose ap and since here by definition p transpose equal to p inverse so a is orthogonally diagonalizable that means this is obviously equal to p inverse ap and from this that imply the eigen value in pr linearly independent and linearly independent eigen value we all of us know in the inner product when i have taught about inner product i have seen linearly independent vectors are always orthogonal so a is orthogonally diagonalizable always imply a has orthonormal set of n vectors conversely two always imply one because consider bunch of orthonormal eigen vectors p1 p2 pn and consider this vector is such type p1 p2 pn 
and since I have considered it P1, P2, Pn are orthonormal eigenvectors. So obviously inner product Pi, Pj would be 0 when i not equal to j and 1 when i equal to j. That means if we consider P transpose P, then this would be P transpose P would be P, P transpose equal to 1. And since P transpose P equal to P, P transpose equal to 1, that implies this bunch of vector be orthogonal. And since this bunch of vector be orthogonal, so the matrix with respect to this vector obviously would be orthogonally diagonalizable. So obviously to imply 1, that means if A is orthonormal set of n vectors, so obviously A is orthogonally diagonalizable. Now I will see 1 imply 3. 1 always imply 3 because 1 indicate A is orthogonally diagonalizable and we have to prove A is symmetric. Since orthogon A is orthogonally diagonalizable, so that implies d equal to p transpose ap and p transpose ap is equal to always p inverse ap and from this expression we can tell a equal to p d p transpose. Now apply transpose both sides because we have to prove a transpose equal to a then we can tell a is a symmetric matrix. By applying transpose we can tell this would be P D transpose P transpose and P D transpose P transpose mean nothing but just A. Therefore, since A transpose equal to A, therefore we can tell the matrix A is a symmetric matrix. Okay? That means orthogonally diagonalizable always imply the matrix A is now symmetric. Now I will see one interesting result to find diagonalizable of matrix by minimal polynomial and characteristic polynomial. A is diagonalizable over the field R if its minimal polynomial is product of distinct linear factor. That means when we can tell the minimal polynomial be product of distinct linear factor then obviously A would be diagonalizable over the field R. As for example consider this matrix and notice here the, this is the upper triangular matrix. So obviously the characteristic polynomial would be lambda minus 1 whole square times lambda minus 3. So by characteristic polynomial we can tell minimal polynomial can be lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 3 or lambda minus 1 whole square times lambda minus 3. But if we consider minimal polynomial B lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 3 then if it would be minimal polynomial then obviously A may with A which is equal to a minus i times a minus 3i. Obviously, this value would be 0. Now, put the value a minus i. Then, the matrix A would be this matrix. And a minus 3i, then the matrix would be this matrix. And product of this matrix always would be 0 matrix. So, obviously, this is be the minimal polynomial. And since this minimal polynomial be linear factor, so by this theorem, we can tell easily this matrix B diagonalizable. Are you getting this rules? By minimal polynomial, we can tell easily is a matrix B diagonalizable or not. Okay. Now I will see one question. Which had come CSR net December 2014 exam. The question is 
Which of the following matrices is not diagonalizable over R? Option 1. The matrix with entries 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. Option 2. Matrix with entries 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3. Matrix with entries 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2, sorry. And uh, option 4, matrix with entries 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0 and 0, 0, 3. Notice, here one thing noticeable, all matrix B, upper triangular matrix. At first notice, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice, here the matrix is upper triangular matrix. So, obviously the eigenvalue are 1, 2, 1. That means, the characteristic polynomial of the matrix is x minus 1 whole square times x minus 2. But from this expression, we can tell minimal polynomial of the matrix would be a minus identity whole square times a minus 2 or a minus identity times a minus 2i. Okay. Now check is this be the minimal polynomial? For this, Calculate a minus i times a minus 2i and this would be this matrix and after multiplying these would be just 0 0 matrix. So obviously this is the minimal polynomial of this matrix since the minimal polynomial here linear factor. So, so we can tell this matrix won't be diagonalizable over r. Are we getting OL? On second action, option, this is also upper triangular matrix and since eigenvalue are 1, 2, 3, so obviously this matrix be diagonalizable. Okay. And from option 3, since the eigenvalue are 1, 1, 2, so obviously similar to before the characteristic polynomial would be x minus 1 whole square times x minus 2. That means minimal polynomial can be a minus identity whole square times a minus 2i or a minus identity times a minus 2i. And now calculate a minus i times a minus 2i. Now, now after calculating this value would be 0 minus, first row would be 0 minus 1, 0. That means this is not equal to 0. So, this is cannot be the minimal polynomial of this matrix. That means, minimal polynomial would be x minus 1 whole square times x minus 2. Okay. Option 3 cannot be diagonalizable. And option 4, similar to before, this is the upper triangular matrix and the eigenvalue will be the 1, 2, 3. And since both are distinct, so we can tell option 4 also diagonalizable. That means only option 1 and option 4 is a right option. Are you getting? I hope my all viewers have understood how by minimal polynomial we can easily find is a matrix be diagonalizable or not? Okay? Well. Today I will stop here. In my next video, I will discuss this topic elaborately. See you soon. Stay safe and stay positive always. And don't forget to do subscribe my channel. Thank you so much.